Hey everybody, welcome. It was a big announcement a few weeks ago. Nine healthcare attorneys joined the healthcare practice group at the Carlton Fields Law Firm in Tampa. Nine. That's a lot, we thought. What does Carlton Fields know that we don't know? What are they expecting? And two of those nine attorneys are here today, Jim Kennedy, Linda Fleming. We would have had them all, but the table just isn't big enough. <laughs> Good to see you all. Thanks, thanks for being here. Um, I, I, I'm going to try and get the dumb question out of the way first. Mm -hmm. What does an attorney, who, who is an attorney who specializes in health care issues? Because I didn't even know that that really existed. Till and you're not alone in that, Russell. Most health care attorneys um, are people who do corporate regulatory work. They might do litigation defense, but it's such a big industry, especially in Florida. Um, nationally, it's a $3 trillion industry. So when you have an industry that big, you typically need a lot of lawyers to navigate through the regulations, draft contracts, consolidate businesses. So we do really the business side yeah. of healthcare. And you were telling me a little while ago that this became much more of a specialty when? Like in the early 80s um, when, when the regulatory scheme changed. It used to be a cost-based reimbursement system um, in yeah. the late 70s and when Congress changed law in 1981 it really prompted a lot of regulation and that resulted in a lot of lawyers thinking you know, this is an interesting field to get into. Linda, uh, we've had health care reform happen over the last, uh, over the last year, and, and, and it may well change into something else when, when, a, when the new Congress go, takes, takes office. But obviously, with health care reform, there has to be belief that the need for an attorney is greater. Yes? Yes. I mean, that's why Carlton Fields did what it did and, and hired Correct. nine new attorneys. I believe so. The Health Care Reform Act is massive, and the regulations that are going to come out of that are going to dwarf the act. So you've got all of these players. You've got insurance companies, hospitals, physicians, drug companies, and the consumer. So everybody is impacted, and everybody is looking for guidance. So part of our job as healthcare attorneys is to help them find their way through the act and then as the regulations get drafted we help them not only get impact as they're being drafted right. but then understand what it means after the fact what was it you were telling me the secretary shall I love that I love that example because I think it gives, it gives people an idea of just how big this thing really okay. is the legislation is 2,000 pages the phrase, the, the secretary shall, meaning the Secretary of Health and Human Services, right. shall draft regulations, is used 2,000 times. Now, that means that every time that phrase is used, that probably 80 to 100 pages of regulations will be promulgated. <laughs> so we're expecting about 200,000 pages of new regulations between now and the end of 2014. I mean, tough for you know patients and consumers to understand it all, but honestly great for lawyers <laughs> well I imagine so yeah, who who is it needs you most obviously I, I'm, I'm thinking a consumer probably is going to be affected by this obviously but hospitals doctors I mean there's a, there's a lot to consider here reimbursements that's I mean that's just one thing right right how do the health care providers get paid how will this change the way health care providers get paid how will insurance industry is going to have to change the way they do business. They are greatly impacted by these changes. So I would say that the people that need us the most are hospitals, physicians, other health care providers, and the insurance company. Yeah. The media does a really good job of keeping consumers informed about what's happening on their front. So some of them will hire lawyers. Part of the challenges to the Health Care Reform Act have actually been from consumers. Yeah. G give me that example you were telling me earlier about the billing, because I find, I find that fascinating. When you, when you get a bill from a hospital now. Right. Right now, whenever you go in for a surgery, you might get 10 different bills. In 2013, there'll be a pilot program for bundled payments. So you go in for your surgery, there will only be one bill to you and one payment to all the providers. So the hospital, the physician, the technicians, everybody will have to share that payment, which isn't how it works at all. Today. No, and, and I mean, you, we were talking about this earlier. I mean, you, if you've been in the hospital and you've had surgery, 
a lot of these people you never see because you, you may have been out and you get the bill and you don't know, what did that person do to me? Who was that person? What, what, what was going on there? Obviously, for a consumer, it makes it easier to pay yeah. one bill, but then for, for the doctor, for the hospital, for whomever else is out there, dividing that up could become an issue, right? Well, what, one of the issues is, Russell, is that the Congressional Budget Office, which did the estimate there would be 10-year cost savings of over a billion dollars, that there's no real explanation of how these providers are supposed to split up the bill. Really? So, you know, we can expect there's going to be some infighting amongst, you know, all the people who are at the table saying, gee, I want this much or I should get that much. So it, it's an issue. But globally, the feeling is that one payment will result in lower cost to the system long term. We're taking a break. We've got a lot more to talk about here. Stick around. We'll be right back.